In this video I'm going to talk about uh, different types of triangles and also uh, angles of triangles. So first of all this is our symbol for triangle. It looks like a triangle so it makes it really easy. But rather than spelling it out you just draw a triangle. Um, a triangle is always comprised of three sides, or three segments that connect um, at vertices. When we have a shape like that, it's called a triangle. There are approximately seven types. The first type um, that's kind of special is called an isosceles. spelled weird. Isosceles triangles are triangles that have two equal or congruent sides. Um, so if these two sides have the same length then we know this is an isosceles triangle. This third side can't have the same length that would be a different type of triangle. Um, later on we'll talk about isosceles triangles more in detail and their properties and characteristics. For now, just know that if you have two equal sides, that's an isosceles triangle. Um, second type is if we have all three sides equal length. And again, I'm just approximating when I draw. That's why I'm using my hash marks here. These hash marks symbolize that any other side that has the same amount of hash marks has the same length. So if all three have one hash mark, then that means that all three sides are equal length. And if all three sides have an equal length, this is called a equilateral. Lateral. Let's see if I can spell it. Equilateral triangle. Lateral refers to sides. Equal refers to equal. So this is saying that all the sides are equal. So all sides are congruent or equal in length. Another type of triangle is if each side is a different length. Here's where we use different hash marks. So this side is not the same as the next one. I have to use two hash marks there and these two sides are not the same as this third one so I have to use three hash marks for that last one. That symbolizes that all the sides have different lengths and this is known as a scaling triangle and that means that all sides have different lengths or that no sides are congruent So all three types right here are referring to um, lengths of sides. Um, the next four have to do with angles inside the triangle. So if I have a triangle that has all acute angles, meaning all the angles, all three of these angles are less than 90 degrees, that's known as an acute triangle. It's pretty easy. All acute angles. If I have a triangle that has an obtuse angle, let's get rid of that one because I can exaggerate my obtuse angle better than that. All right here. There we go. There's a nice obtuse angle right there. It's a pretty easy name. It's known as an obtuse triangle. Now this obtuse angle, there can only be one in a triangle because if any other angle 
was another obtuse angle, we would never be able to connect our sides and we wouldn't have a three-sided shape, we wouldn't have a triangle. So only one obtuse angle and the other angles have to be acute. If I have a triangle that is exactly 90 degrees at an angle, and I'll symbolize that by using our square, that means without measuring, I'm just going to say that's 90. That's known as a right triangle. It has a right angle. And we're going to talk more about right triangles um, in other videos and later on but we're gonna realize that these two angles have special characteristics right off the bat any type of right triangle these other two angles other two angles are going to be a complementary pair so you know that if this is 90 degrees these two angles have to add up to 90 to give us a total of 180 degrees um, and they can either both be 45 degrees and add up to 90 or they can be 60 and 30 degrees and that adds up to 90 those two are special types of right triangles we'll definitely get into those but really they could be any two complementary angles so any two angles that add up to 90 alright our last one here is what is known as an equiangular triangle. Again, remember equa means equal. Angular is now referring to the angles in the triangle. And I can symbolize that by drawing little arcs in the corner of the angles. And if they have the same amount of arcs, then that means that all the angles are equal. So there's only one arc in each angle that means they're all the same angle well let's figure out what angle measurement they all have because they all have the same angle measurement if I know that triangles have a total of 180 degrees all their angles have to add up to 180 degrees and I know that all three of them are the same then I can divide 180 by 3 and that's the same as 18 divided by 3 with a zero. So each angle in an equiangular, uh, equiangular triangle is 60 degrees. It's a hard word to say. 60, 60, 60. Adds up to 180. All right, so those are the seven most basic types of triangles and some of their characteristics. So again, triangles have to add up, all the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So let's do some problems where we have to figure out missing angles of triangles, because that is a common geometry problem. You know what? I'm not going to mess around with it freehand here, because I'm making a mess. I think I have a tool that lets me draw a triangle here. Maybe not. There we go. All right. So let's say that we measure this angle and it ends up being, I don't know, 60 degrees. And we measure this angle and it ends up being 50 degrees. And I'm asked to find what X is. And X is symbolizing the missing angle. Well, if I know they all have to add up to 180 degrees, then what I do is I take 60 and I add 50 to it and then I need to figure out what's missing so let's combine like terms over here on the left side 60 plus 50 is 110 still missing an angle but I know no matter what it is it's going to add up to 180 so using our algebra skills if we subtract 110 from both sides then we find that X equals 70 degrees all right, so that's the most basic type of um, geometry math with triangles, finding missing angles based on the fact that you know two of the three. So you always just add up what we know and then subtract that from 180 degrees to find the missing angle.
Another thing we can do with triangles is talk about what's known as exterior angles. So we just talked about all of the angles inside of a triangle. But we can also create angles that are right outside the triangle. Exterior means outside. So if I extend, let's say this is our triangle and I extend this segment a little bit farther out. Well that created this angle on the outside of the triangle and that is known as an exterior angle. Exterior angle. If we have names in each of those angles, this is going to be an unknown right here, this exterior angle, this measurement is going to be equal to the sum of the farther two angles. So when I'm trying to find exterior angles of triangles, I'm not going to pay attention to the angle that's right next to the exterior angle. I'm going to worry about the farther angles, the angles that are farther away from there. So if I add angle 1 to angle 2, then it will give me the measurement of the exterior angle. Um, likewise, if I extend this segment on this side, I have another exterior angle. Let's call this one Y. And I could figure out the measurement of Y if I knew the farther away angles. If I knew 2 and 3, if I added those together, that would give me Y. So if I add 2 with angle 3, that gives me Y. And the last one, 2. Let's draw. Really doesn't matter. I can extend this line or I could have extended that line. Either way, I've still created an exterior angle. Let's call this one Z. And again, I can find the measurement of Z, the measurement of this exterior angle, if I add the angles that are the farthest away from this. So if I add 1 and 3 now, that will give me Z. And the reason this works really has to do with supplementary angles or linear pairs. So let's draw another example real quick and really dissect why this is working here. So real quick, another triangle here. Let's extend that line past it and just talk about this one here just to prove a point. Let's call it X again. Let's say that this is um, 48 degrees. Let's say that this over here is 57 degrees. And we don't know this one, let's say. So again, to figure out a missing angle of a triangle, we add up the ones we know. So 48 plus 57. That gives us 105 degrees. So we know 105 degrees out of a total of 180. So what are we missing? What more do we need to get up to 180? We'll subtract what we know from 180. And we get 75 degrees. All right. So now, 75, this angle right here, 75 degrees, combined with the missing angle X would give us a linear pair. It would give us a line which would add up to 180 degrees. So let's figure out what X is using our linear pair strategy. We know it's got to add up to 180. We know 75 of this linear pair right here. So what's missing in order to add up to 180? Well, just subtract 75 from both sides. And again, we get 100 and 5 degrees. Well, isn't that the same as what the sum of those farther away angles were, right? If we added 57 and 48, we got 105. That's the exact same as what we found X to be. So that's why it works. And these angles right here are called remote angles. Remote angles. That's not too important. As long as you know how to figure out the exterior angles, of triangles is just adding up those remote angles or really the angles that are farthest away from your exterior angle that you're trying to find.
All right, so those are angles of triangles.